Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church Square. Since we're downstairs this morning, so if you notice here, this is not where we regularly are. That's because upstairs they have fun with scaffolding and they're painting and doing renovations. Uh, I think some of you were able to go upstairs and already look and see some pictures online. We're thankful that they've been doing that and we've been able to get towards that. Uh, we'll be down here at least for two weeks, maybe three, just depending on. Um, so I'm excited that we are together down here. We have this extra space to do this. Uh, I told our team, from those that came from the Hope and the Merch Church that uh, came last year, uh, that this is kind of like uh, church planning for us, a little bit of setup and tear down that we're used to. And so uh, this was fun for everybody down here to participate in that. But we're glad that you're here this morning. Welcome. Again, if it's your first time today, thank you for bearing with us in a little bit of transition. Uh, hopefully, if you uh, grab the bulletin on your way in, you can see the order of service and participate today. If it is your first time, the easiest way for you to connect today is the text that we're um, online. It's the same thing for those of you who are watching online. The text that we're online for the number you see on the screen. Uh, and we would love to get to know you, answer any questions that you have. There's a little survey, a little form that you can fill out on there. We don't ask for a ton of information on your social security or any of that crazy stuff. Just some basic things to get to know you uh, so that we can uh, journey along this faith journey in life together. I'm going to turn it over to Jimmy in just a second. He's going to come up and he's going to read scripture for us. Uh, and then we'll pray. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. This morning is from Psalms 30, 2 to 5. Lord my God, I call to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the drum of death. Spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, and you, his faithful people, raise this holy name. For you, God spoke and said, for, this, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we are so thankful for the gift of life that you've given us. God, we're so thankful for uh, you waking us up to a new day. God, I pray that you will be with us today, that everything we do and say will be the glory. God, as we gather here with family, friends, loved ones, God, neighbors, co-workers, God, as there are those that are watching online who are not able to come today. God, I pray that they will be strengthened by your word. I pray that you give us Pastor Ty the words to speak for this moment for our church. God, we will encourage one another through song as we lift up your name and sing praises to you today. God, thank you again for this day that we can gather together and have the freedom to celebrate you, to give you glory as the King of Kings. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand in worship. Thank you. 
Today, because of the way we are, we're going to do something a little bit different and also we're going to have a special time praying for Ukraine. So I'm going to dismiss the kids now to their classes. They can go ahead and go. And uh, just a moment, we're going to continue the time of Changing it up for me. It's difficult changing it up for kids, isn't it? Get them in a routine. Hey, this is where I normally go. That's not where I'm at today, right? Uh, these adults don't get like that, <laughs> uh, Well, guys, I, I want to take a special time today for us to pray for Ukraine. Hopefully, you saw this week, for those of you that are on Facebook and our different social media, you saw the list that we had posted from our partner, Timber Leaf, uh, and some of the things that we can pray for. And today, I'd like us to take that time now. Um, I'm going to give us a moment to pause. Uh, I'm actually going to let the floor open today. Uh, if you'd like to say a short couple sentence prayers, I'm going to let you go ahead and do that. Uh, and then I'm going to pray uh, over Ukraine and uh, then we'll continue the message. So let's go to the Lord with that. God, thank you for this day. God, thank you that we can gather together, that we can sing, God, that we can pray, that we have so much freedom here, God. And I pray that we don't take it for granted in this time. God, I pray as we are gathered, as we spend time singing, we spend time fellowshipping before and getting to know one another, God, as uh, we put our all into this as we continue to, God, I pray that you will hear our hearts cry. God, I pray in this moment as we're going to uh, focus in the people of Ukraine, the people everywhere that are involved in this, uh, family members that may be here, God, family members that may be in other places, God, I pray today that as your people take time to pray, that you will hear them. So God, this moment, we offer up these prayers to you. Lord, we're reminded. 
reminded of the scripture that says that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And I pray that you would move upon President Putin's heart to repent of this invasion. Yes, well, that might sound like a miracle, but you're the God of truth. That's right. You created the world with a few words, and you can change his heart with the yes, breath of your you spirit. And I pray you would do something inside of him, even now in this moment. Right. It would help him to realize that no good can come That's from this world. That's So that's what it's all about. 
That's all we got to be good. We got to get people to Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so I'm very grateful and very thankful for this opportunity. And I love your pastor very much. He, uh, even before he became a pastor, he was walking with the Lord and doing his best to serve the Lord. And uh, you're a privileged church uh, to have him here uh, because he loves you. He loves you. And there's no doubt about that. And he has, he has also uh, uh, brought uh, these two churches together as you voted to do so. It just seemed like that's the way God wanted it. And, uh, and it's a blessing to me to know that two churches can come together and be willing to do what you're doing. And that's to honor God. Right here on this hill. Amen? Amen. With a lot of steps. <laughs> All you got to do every day, Logan, is get out here and walk these steps and you'll lose weight and be skinny. I'm not kidding, man. I'm not kidding. Jerry said, we're going to go up a few steps. And I said, I don't believe he knows the difference between a few and a bunch. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I tell you, the Lord is so good. I don't want to take very long. But, but I am praying for you. Our church prays for you. And uh, Fairview Baptist wants to support you any way we can. And we mean that. And uh, our mission team looks forward once again coming up here. We're praying for a whole lot more to come this time as they come up. And and uh, we try to do mission trips, uh, you know, foreign mission trips. And we try to do local mission trips in our own area. And then we try to do mission trips, um, you know, uh, through the up north and and uh, so we, we just love missions and we uh, the Lord has given us a project right here. Amen? Amen. To be able to help you and if it's money, if it's uh, uh, hands on, we want to do what we can to help you. I'm so excited about what you're doing to your worship son. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I want to tell you something, these all these folks around here, uh, I only say this because I've been pastoring for a long time. All these people around here and all these people that own stores and all the business, they know there's something going on here because of what you're doing. And they're going to come by. They're going to come by. And they're, uh, you know how we are. Maybe we're a nosy bunch of people, aren't we? Amen. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let's go see what. Let's go see what this is all about. And you know what? They come in, discover they, they got a minister that's preaching the truth. They got people that believe the truth and, and uh, they're confident that they need the truth because we're being told a bunch of lies in these days and Satan's just, hey, he's deceiving a lot of people. And I'm glad there's a church sitting right here in Marlboro that preaches the truth oh, yeah. of the Word of God. Isn't that a blessing? Yeah. Give Jesus a hand clap for that. Amen. Yeah. That's a blessing. Well, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to start uh, reading some scripture here. And, uh, and I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Jeremiah. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. We're going to look together there. And we're going to start with verse 1. And I'm reading out the King James Version. And that's the version I use. And I'm grateful for other versions of the Bible. But this is the one I choose to use. And uh, um, so we're looking at uh, verses 1 through 6. And I always ask folks to stand in reverence to the reading of God's precious word. So would you please, if you're able, stand with me as we read the scripture. The Bible says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the Father's house, and there will cause thee to hear my words. And I went down to the Father's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was mired in the hand of the potter. To be now, uh, so he made it again another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. I'm going to read verse 6 one more time, and then we'll pray. The Bible says, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as the potter saith the Lord? 
Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you that it will never return void. Your word is infallible. Your word is inerrant. Your word is the total truth. We cannot add to it. We cannot take away from it. We here today agree, Lord, that you want to do great mighty things at Marlboro First Baptist Church. We know you've got your hand upon this place. And Lord Jesus, I pray that we would open ourselves up to you this morning. I pray, Lord, we'd not think about anybody else's difficulty or problem or, or, or maybe uh, how they live their lives outside of the church. But Lord, I pray that we would all take a look at where we stand today with Holy God. That we would not be judgmental when it comes to others. That we would not say in our heart, boy, I wish so and so was here today. So they could hear this message. No, may we have the attitude, Lord, that this message is for me. It's for me. Lord, do a work in me. Today, Lord. Be Jesus in me. No longer me but me. Resurrection power. Fill me this hour. Jesus. Be Jesus in me. In your precious name I pray this prayer. Amen. You may be seated. Jeremiah prophesied for 40 some odd years. He preached the word. He saw many people that as we look through the scripture, many people that would say, well, well, you know, that's a great message. That's a great word. Boy, that really stirred me. But there's a difference in being stirred and being changed. You never saw anybody, to my knowledge, that give their heart to the Lord. For 40-something 40 40 years, he preached the gospel. He never saw a little conversion. But he didn't stop he didn't quit. He was in a tough era. He was in a, a tough time. People didn't want to hear the truth. They were turning away from the truth. Today, you and I are living in a tough era. We're living in tough, tough times. And people are turning a deaf ear to the truth of the gospel. The Bible says in the last days that people will have itchy ears. They want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want the preacher preaching what they don't want to hear. And if he does, they don't want to come hear it. This means yes, this means no. Alright? They don't, they don't want to come hear it. They don't want to sit under the, the preaching and the teaching of the truth of the Word of God. Because they know that that truth will penetrate their heart. It will cause the wheels in their mind to begin to turn. And it will cause an uncomfortableness a conviction as we know it in their heart and in their very soul to know that the truth is being told unto them and they cannot do one thing about it. It's hard, hey, it's hard to stand against the truth. It's hard to stand against the truth. And so right here we see Jeremiah. We see where he's at in his life. And I, I don't know about you, but years ago I heard a professor say in school, he said these words. He said, I don't know about you today, but I do need a word from God. He said, not only do I need a word from God today, but I need a word from God every day of my life. And I thought, Lord, that's me. I need your word. I need your truth. Lord, give me a word from your precious word. Yeah. I want to tell you, we find strength in God's word. And many, many times in the scripture here in Jeremiah, you'll hear Jeremiah saying, Lord, I need a word from you. And then you'll see the Lord responding by saying, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, when God speaks, my dear friend, it's because there's a desired heart that wants to receive the word. You hear me, don't you? There's a desired heart. There's an open heart. There's a hunger in that individual to get a word from God's precious word. We've got to have a hunger. We've got to have a hunger. 
I tell my folks sometimes the reason that God's not moving in your life is because you've been filling on, filling up on everything out there, and when you come into the house of God to get a word from God, there's no room for it. One time in my wife, uh, she was off. She worked three days a week. And she would work the next week, four days. She's a nurse. She's been in RN for over 41 years. And I remember one day I had to go make a visit at a hospital. And I took my son Jonathan with me. And I'll never forget this. We we were we were uh, uh, traveling on the road. It was about 50 miles where we needed to go to a big medical center in Athens, Georgia. If you know anything about the uh, college uh, 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 college football, you'll know that Georgia won the national championship. And uh, and and I'm not a Georgia man, but but uh, I was pulling for them that night. And uh, but but the thing about it is, is we went to Athens, Georgia, right there close to the universe, to, uh, university, to uh, make this visit. And we got to coming home. I was hungry. My son was hungry. I picked him up right after school. We took off. And I said, Jonathan, there's a crystals right there. You want something? He said, man, I did that. And so he got three crystal burgers. I got four crystal burgers. <laughs> we got fries and we got some to drink. And we're coming down the road taking in crystal burgers like Tylenol. <laughs> We just had a rest of time, you know. And I want you to know we eat all that. And my wife calls me and she says, what time are you going to be home? And I said, we're going to be home in about 40 minutes. And she said, well, that's good. She said, I've had steak and gravy on all afternoon. And I said, really? And she said, yeah. And she said, we got rice and we got biscuits and we got green beans and we got potato salad. <laughs> And I want to tell you, I said, that is wonderful. And I'm looking at my son going, yeah. <laughs> you know, don't say anything. And so anyway, anyway, what happened was uh, me and Jonathan had this long talk before we put him in the driveway. I said, here it is. You follow my lead. You follow my lead. Do not tell your mom we stopped by Christmas. Do not tell her. See, she didn't have an opportunity to fix a meal like that because of her job and stuff. Most of the time it was me and, and, and I was fixing something for the kids and us and everything. And so when I walked in there, y'all, I'm telling you any other time this fat man would have been so excited. <laughs> but I didn't, oh, it just, I was full. I was full. And I said, Jonathan, when you see me get something, you get it. Do not act like you don't want it. Eat it, but Daddy, I can't eat anymore. I said, Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. So you can in Jesus' name. You can eat it. I said, We're not gonna spoil this for your mom. I said, I'm about to die, but I want you to know we're gonna eat it, and then we will pay for the results when we're done. <laughs> so we went in there. We got steak, bread, we got rice, we got biscuits, we got green beans, we got potato salad, and after we got through, she said. Get some more. <laughs> I said, well, I, and I thought, I've got room in my armpit. <laughs> anyway, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just eat. So I got a little more jump and said, I'm not, I said, yes, you are. You know, don't you want some more steak and gravy? Don't you want some more? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. He got in a little bit more, so we finished up. And, we finished up there and she said, Jonathan, what was you just picking up your food and eating it and all like that? And she said, Well, Daddy told me not to tell you we stopped by Christmas before we got in. And Lord, it was on, amen. And you don't want to get a southern woman on there, amen. So I'm telling you, she jumped all over us just you know, the same way in the church. We get impatient out here in this world. And we go to church thinking, well, why are you not doing anything for me? Why is he not speaking to me? Why is it not talking about how good things are at the church? And boy, it's this people talk about me. Did he not preach a great sermon? Boy, it really spoke to my heart, man. You know, okay, it was all right. You know why it's not all right? You, 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 you know why it's not good with you? You know why, my friend, that it's not a word from the word for you? It's because we fill up on everything out there. And when we come in here, we're grateful to be here. But the work that God wants to do in us, He can't. Because we've 
We'll have any room for it. This is what's happening here. This is what's taking place here. And the scripture says that Jeremiah asked a word from God. He said, I'm this. I need a word from you. This is a man of God. This is a Christian. He's needing a word from God. If God speaks. If God speaks in a mighty way in the prophet's life. And then we see that the prophet uh, uh, of, uh, of the Lord is sent to the potter and that he that he might get, listen to me, an object lesson, that he might see what's going on not only in the life of Israel, but what's going on in his own life. In his own life. I find, man, that people worry so much about everybody else, but they never stop and look where they stand with God. And if the church is going to be what it needs to be in these days, we need a people that's willing to be honest about who they are and say, God, I need a word. And I need you to work in my life so that the church can be stronger, the body of Christ, and we can do the work that you call us to do. And so right here in the scripture verses, we see, we see that God can put a new meaning into the common affairs of life. And he can, and listen to me, the prophet is humble enough, listen to me, to obey the call and willing enough to learn the mind of the Lord. Listen to me, he is willing enough to obey the call and mindful enough to learn what the Lord is willing to say. Before I get into the points, I want you to remember something. He asked for a word. He asked God to speak to him. God, I have reached the end of my road. I've heard people say that through the years. One professor said this to a student when he got up. I mean, crying, man. I mean, crying. He said, I have reached the end of my road. I cannot do any more at this church. I I have tried, and they will not follow my leadership. And that professor looked at him, and he said, Son, all, all I can tell you is tie a knot and hold on. That made me so mad. But then I thought about it. That's what we have to do. That knot's the Lord Jesus. And we hold on to him. We hold on to him. I heard about a man that was walking one time and, and he got too close to a cliff and he fell and as he was going down he grabbed hold of a root that was sticking out of out of the dirt there and out of the side of that cliff and he grabbed hold of it and he said God please help me God please help me help me he was so desperate you would be too and all that was God said from heaven let go son and that man said Lord is there anybody else up there that can help me? <laughs> oh, what we need to do is we need to tie a knot. We need to just hold on. That's where Jeremiah was in his life. There's three things I want you to see. Three or four things I want you to see here in these verses of Scripture uh, this morning. Number one, I want you to see the clay. I want you to see the clay. The Bible says there in verse 6, it says these words. It says, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Can I not do with you as this potter? O house of Israel. You see, what we see here is we see that this clay represents the house of Israel. It represents the house of Israel. It's dug out of Egypt, brought into Canaan, the great potter's house where he desires to work in his people. One thing that I must point out to you, only one time does it talk about wheels. It talks about wheels. It talks about more than one, but when it talks about the clay, it's only talking about one because it's personal. It's personal. And then it talks about not only the clay being personal, 
And, and, and it talks about the vessel being personal. You see, the Lord has to do a personal work in me and you. And he has to do it through the wheels. Through the wheels. And so we see here in these verses of Scripture, like Israel, we have, we have here uh, 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 taken out of the, the clay or, or, or the pit of, 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 of the clay and, and we have been taken out of that darkness and, 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 and out of slavery and brought into the kingdom of God's dear son. You and I have been brought in. How have we been brought in and taken out of the pit of clay? How have we been brought in? Through the blood of the Lord Jesus. Through the sacrificial death of the Lord Jesus. He, hey, listen to me. He gave his body and give, poured out his blood so that you and I could have life and have it more abundantly. When I look back on my life and I see where Jesus has brought me from, he had to reach further down than I could ever reach up. I was way down there. I was lost and undone without him. I grew up in an alcoholic home. I grew up in a home that loved gambling. I grew up in a home that loved fighting. I grew up in a home where my dad owned a bar. And we were surrounded by alcohol and smoke and, 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 and gambling and greed and selfishness. And I'm telling you, that's the way I grew up till I was 12 years of age. And then at 12 years of age, I began to do the very things that I grew up in. That was my life. When I was 11 years old, I took my first drink of alcohol. And that continued for many years of my life. But when I look back, and I see that this old piece of clay where Jesus reached down further than I could ever reach out. And he took this clay out of that pit of darkness. And he set me on a wheel and he began to do a work in my life. And I began to see that Jesus is the truth. He's the life. He's the way. And I began to see that man. God began to convict me in my heart and show me that I was a sinner, that I needed to be saved. And I want you to know I got saved. I want you to know that I'm still saved. And as the song said a while ago, no man or no situation or circumstance can pluck me out of the hand of Almighty God. I am His for all of eternity. And what a blessing to be able. If I'm going to go back, that's what I want to see. I want to see where he brought me from, the work he's done in my life, because it makes me stronger in my Christian life today. I couldn't do that for myself, but my Lord did it for me. And I want to tell you, I never want to get over where he brought me from. How about you, brother? Amen? I never want to get over where he brought me from. Man, what a blessing. It gives me you know, I don't know what y'all say up here. Y'all say cold chills on my body. Back on Goosebumps! Man, you've been in South Carolina, but anyway, it's, uh, it's Goosebumps. I call this Holy Goosebumps. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I tell you, it sacks my soul. You see, the clay is raw material. It always needs to be worked on. And just because you say it, don't mean that there's not work to do. Can I just tell you something right now? Sometimes we think we hot, but we're not. <laughs> Hello? We do. And boy, God has to bring me down a couple of levels. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a work in progress. I still am. And I'm going to be when Jesus takes me home. And I want to learn. And I want to take a trip every once in a while. When he, when he opens that door to the potter's house to remind me of who I am in Him. You see, that's the clay. You and I are a work in progress. Number two, we got to look at the wheels. we got to look at the wheels. The Bible says there in verse 3, if you look with me, the Bible says in verse 3, 
It says, Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he brought a work on the wheel. Now I love to point this out. The word which came to Jeremiah, verse 1, from the Lord saying, Rise, go down to the potter's house, and that will cause them to hear my words. Period. It don't say anything else. You see, he asked the word for God. God gave him the word, and the Bible says he didn't use any excuses. You know what holds us back, man, from the blessings of God is our excuses. And you know what? We've always got one. We've always got one. But the Bible says, period. He didn't ask. Man, he didn't say anything else. What's he say? Then I went down to the potter's house. He didn't say, why do you want me to go down to the potter's house? That's so stupid. Why do you want me to go down to the potter's house? What am I going to give them the potter's house when you can speak a word right where I am and I'll have it? Why do you come to church? Can I just tell you this? The potter's house is the church. The potter's house is the body of Christ. Jesus is the potter. Me and you are the clay. Why do you come to church? You come to church to get a word. He wanted him to go to the potter's house. And the first thing he saw was the clay. Second thing he saw was the wheels. The Bible says, the Bible says right here, the wheels of God's promises, purposes, and providences. We all, listen, working together, but we're all working together for their good. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, it says that all things work together for good to them that love God and them who are called for His purpose. So we see the purposes and the providences and the promises here. You see, being in the kingdom of God, we are in the spiritual sphere of His favor and His grace. We are. All our circumstances and are but you know they are just wheels in which our spiritual lives are formed or being formed and the life of all the Bible saints are witnesses to this when you go back and you look at the Bible saints and you see them man you will see the circumstances that God worked through to make them what they were they were wheels operating in their life to make them so I just want you to know today, they are some, you probably have some difficult things going on in your life. I mean, if you don't, you're not living a normal life. You probably have situations. They things that's going on, you're not going to tell anybody. But can I tell you, your circumstances and your trials and your troubles and your valleys and, and all those difficulties that you face in life does not, it might change you, but it never changes God and who He is. He can help you through anything, through any difficulty, because when Jeremiah looked at those wheels, he saw what God was doing with the clay. There's no operation of the clay unless the wheels are moving. Clay can't be anything unless the wheels are moving. Amen? Amen. So, we see here that that in, in the Scripture, not only do we see the, the clay, the wheels, but we see the potter. We see the potter. The Bible says that in verse 3, or uh, verse 6, it says, in the, and, and O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? You see the operation of the wheels. You see the operating rather of the wheels. You see how the, the potter is operating on the clay. Matter of fact, he is the best surgeon you'll ever run into. Yeah. But he's operating on the clay. He, he's working with it. He's doing something with it. The wheels are turning. You see, the Lord himself is the potter. He is the potter. There's no doubt about that. And, and, and then listen, it is it's a wonderful possibility. And it's right there for you and me and also for Israel. Also for Israel. You see, being in the hand of the potter. Being in the hand of the potter and of his purpose and, and, and listen, of his placing is an awesome thing. 
just to think about being in his hands. You see, Nehemiah is a wonderful example to me and you of what God the Potter can do with the clay. There's Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 8. And he is able to accomplish because the, the hand of God was upon him. My brother in law sits here today, Dr. Terry Dorsey. And I call him Terry, but I respect his office. And I'm very grateful for him. And I, and I love him and appreciate him so much. But God had his hand on him to put him where he is. And God has used him in a mighty way in these six states of New England to do a work for God. 388 churches. And, and God has put him in that place to do the work that he's doing. And I know him and I've heard him. And it's nothing about him. He said it's the hand of God that did this. It's the hand of God that's doing this. It's the witness of God and the turning of the wheels in his life as a piece of clay that God has molded him and made him and shaped him to do the job that he's doing right here in New England. Where I'm at, I have nothing to boast to brag about. I didn't want to go to the church I'm at. I did not want to go. I told God, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I did. I said, I'm not going. He said, Okay, big boy. I'm going to slap you off this wheel. I don't want to go. I was in a church with staff all around me. I was in a church that had great potential. A church that was growing, a church that was going forward in spite of the things that we had to face. And I didn't want to go and I'll make this short story. Short, short too, all right? But anyway, I didn't want to go. My wife didn't want to go. Matter of fact, I didn't call the committee back when they called it was in my hometown. I didn't want to go back to my hometown. You know, here's what I figured until God came along, knocked me off my high horse, that I had started in a smaller church, and that church grew, thank the Lord Jesus. And I didn't want to leave that church when I left it. And then God moved me to Georgia, and I went into a church that grew absolutely. Uh, it was a God thing, and the church just grew, 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 and we just praised God. I was there for nine years. And I want to tell you, when this church came to hear me that I was at before, I went to Fairview where I've been almost 15 years. I want you to know that, that the Lord began to work and the Lord began to do great things. And when it came time for God to move me, I did not want to go. I did not want to go. I did not want to go. Until one day, piece of clay on the wheel, God told me, you don't tell me what you're going to do. I tell you what. Amen. And you do what I tell you to do. Today I have staff all around me. We have a growing church. We just built six years ago when I give God glory and honor and praise. Five and a half years ago we just built a $1.3 million building. And today, today, we owe under $87,000 on that bill. And prayerfully in July, we're going to pay that bill and have that debt off. And it's going to be gone. And I give God all the glory and I give Him all the honor and I give Him all the praise. I've been there 15 years and I will tell you it's the greatest church I've ever served. And I've served some good ones. This is my fourth church. And I pray I retire there at 80. <laughs> I got 50 years ago. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, anyway. But I really do. It's amazing what God can do. I'm talking about the Old Testament people. I'm talking about the New Testament people, what God did for them. But when you look here, when you look right here, guys, when you look right here at what God's done at this church, Amen. it blesses me. I rode by this church yesterday with family. And I felt that I was a part of this church. I felt like I was a part of this family. And I could see this church. And when you drive down the road and you come back up, 
And then here stands Marlboro First Baptist Church that's been a sleeping giant through the years, but no more. This church is rolling for the glory of God. Woo! He blesses me and he helps me. And God has blessed you with a fine pastor who loves Jesus. Yeah. Loves his family, loves his church family. And I, I just tell you, I don't think you could have a better pastor. I, I really do, and I mean that. Yeah. And there are going to be some things you don't like about me. You, guess what? There are going to be some things you don't like about you. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? But I guarantee you, if you'll love him, yeah. you'll stand with him. He ain't perfect, not going to be perfect. But I want to tell you something, he'll be a pastor to you. Yeah. And he'll be one that'll teach you the Word of God. And that's what a church needs. Yeah. That's what a church needs. And I'm, I'm just so grateful for his wife and his precious children I love. And uh, if Lawson keeps growing, he'll be body slamming me. And just <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, the Lord's good. I don't know how long I've been preaching, and usually I don't care. But anyway, I'm, uh, I'm right here. But listen, i got to give you this. i got to give you this. Oh, he's the giver of all grace, folks. Jesus is the giver of all grace. The potter is. He's the giver of all grace. Who has called you to share His eternal glory through Christ Jesus. And will manifest, listen to me, Himself and make you perfect. That word perfect there means, listen, that's 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. But listen to me. Hear me right here. Hear me right here. Hear me right here. That word perfect means mature. He will make you mature. He will make you grow. Grow. The more faithful you are to the church, the more you're in the Word, the more you pray, the more you seek it, the more you get involved in the work of God. You're maturing in the faith. And the people of God are going to be, begin to see the things that God's doing in your life. And then they'll desire to have those things in their life. And they'll meet with you. And if you were down here uh, in six months to a year, you would have to say, we don't have no room to hold the people. Because the potter's at work. He's at work. You see, the wonder-working hand of God is the Holy Spirit who works in us both to will and to do of His good pleasure. And then I want you to see the vessel. I want you to see the vessel quickly. Okay, let's look at that. Even in the hand of the divine potter, verse 4, verse 4, that vessel Israel, it was mine. He was working with it. He was working with it. Through disobedience, they became another dishonored vessel. Now hear me. Can you picture the potter on the wheel working with the clay? And I just want you to put yourself into the hand of the potter just for a moment as we get ready to close. I want you to put your hand, your mind, on the potter and the clay and the wheel. You see, Jeremiah went down because he was desperate. He was obedient. And he went down there. And when he went inside the potter's house, he saw the potter working with the clay on the wheels. And when he began to work, as he watched his hands on that clay, something happened, something takes place. He stops. But the wonderful thing about it is he starts over. No, he got it yet, but when you get it, I believe you'll smile. <laughs> but listen to me. This vessel, this vessel, he's working with the vessel. And he is doing a work there. The vessel that he made of clay was mired in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel. Now listen. Israel's disobedient. The potter sees it. Jeremiah begins to see it. How many Sanskrit teachers we got? One, two, and there's probably a few more. You just bad, just scared to raise your hand and start. But listen, there's probably a few more. But but think about it is, 
Logan, Brother Terry, some of you can identify with what I'm about to say, Jerry. Some of you can identify with what I'm about to say. You ever been studying for a sermon and you're looking at the scripture and God begins to speak to you? It just begins to boil inside of you. You're not thinking about the congregation. You're not thinking about those students that are sitting up there in front of you. You're thinking about how God's speaking to you through this. That's what was happening to Jeremiah. He was a vessel. He was being mired in the hand of the potter. You see, I can say it's about you all day long. But until I get back to me, it don't have nothing to do with you. I got to look at me. Because the Holy Spirit's working in me. Oh, I was a vessel. Just a piece of clay. Mired in the hand of the potter. And I want you to know I'm nothing. But Jesus is it. And the scripture says right here. So he made it again another vessel, seeing good the power of it. How many times have we failed the Lord? How many times have we sinned when we said, I don't want to sin? How many people do we know that has got in trouble that won't come into the church because of the sin that they've committed? They're shamed. Sad to say that some people in churches have made them feel like that. They forget where God's brought them from. They forget the battles they've had in life. You know what? Everybody's special to God. But everybody needs a work done in them by God. And Jeremiah begins to see this self on that wheel as God was working with him. And then all at once the potter stops because the potter sees something wrong with the clay. So he made it again another vessel to see the other potter make it. It don't say he reached and got another piece of clay. It doesn't say, brother, that he took that piece of clay that he was working with and threw it into the trash can. It says that he took the same piece of clay he had been working with and he began to work on that clay again. He don't kick us out to the curb. He don't throw us in the trash can. When we mess up, he starts over. And God blessed the day. He didn't throw the clay away. Over and over, he molds it and he makes it into his fashion. Making it what he wants it to be. But if we fail, if we come up short, if we sin and we are guilty and we come before him, we ask his forgiveness. And I'm telling you, the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, that he is faithful, he is just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Amen. Yeah. Praise, the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He'll do for you what you can do for yourself. Yeah. There's a lot of people, man, that have been forgiven by God, but they just cannot come to the place to forgive themselves. <clears throat> if you ever get to the place to where you know that you've truly been forgiven. You'll forgive yourself. Because Jesus' blood will never lose its power. Jesus' blood today is still setting the captive free. He's still changing lives. He's still doing it. Or we have people coming to our church sometime their hair will be green. Next week it'll be pink. Next week it'll be rainbow colors. I don't know. And I'm thinking, how do they do that in a week? <laughs> but I love them. We have people coming to our church that's got tattoos all over. But I love them. We have people that's been drug addicts. They come to our church. And I love them. We have people come to our church that don't look like us.
us, no snow like us, no walk like us, no live like us. But I love them. Jesus loves them. And if Jesus loves them, I've got to love them. It's amazing what God will do if the clay will just yield itself to the potter. He don't throw you away. He just starts over again. Here's the application. Verse 6. Well, here's the application. I want you to go with me there, okay? Look with me. It's on the board, I'm sure. On the screen. It says there, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as the potter saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand. When I read that, I have to read it like this. O tight shoulders, can I not do with you as the potter saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye tight shoulders in my hand. Would you put your name there where it says, O house of Israel? Can we put Marlboro First Baptist in there? Oh, Lord, our first Baptist church, can I not do with you as the Father said? Behold, as the clay is in the hand of the potter, so are you, Marlboro first Baptist, in my Whether we're in Boston or South Carolina, you and I are working progress. The song they sing sometimes, I don't know if they've sung it before, but I know we do it in our church. He's still working on it. To make me what he wants me to be. And it'll be a work until he takes me home. When's the last time you took a trip to the potter's house? When's the last time you come to that place in your life where you say, Lord, I need a word from you. I've been filling up everywhere else. But today I come empty. Today I come empty before you. I need a word. Fill me, Lord Jesus. I'm grateful today that I know that I'm a work in progress. And I come and I ask you to forgive me, to cleanse me of my sin. You don't have to go find somebody. You don't have to. Listen, it's between you and the Lord. It's between you and the Lord. Now, Logan told me to handle this invitation. Do what I need to do. And I don't know today if you're saved. I, I have no idea. The only person I know in this building that's truly saved is me. Is this a personal matter? Now I want to think and pray that you're saved. But if you're not, today you can be saved. Jesus changed your life. You know him today, just like I know him. You can ask him to forgive you of your sins, to come into your heart and be your Savior. Then you will be discipled and helped in following in a relationship with him. I know this church will be. But maybe today as a Christian, we have to be doing what we're doing here. Uh, and, and those kids are wonderful. Isn't that a beautiful sound? Today I want you to think about you just for a minute. I want you to take that trip. And I want you to take a look and see the potter working with the clay, who is Jesus. And in his hands, he's holding you. He's working in your life. 
and those wheels are just a turning and all those circumstances and difficulties and trials and things that you face and go through are making you, can make you more of what he wants you to be. If you'll just let him ask him to forgive you. Ask him to cleanse you of your sin. He's faithful and just to do that. He's faithful and just to do that. And to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We're going to pray. He's going to play. And if you feel like coming after in just a minute, you come. I really believe the Lord spoke to our hearts today. The Lord spoke to me. Father, we want to thank you for the Word of God. We want to thank you, Lord, for the way you're drawing people. I want to thank you, Lord, for Pastor Logan being up here close by where he can pray with you if you want him to. And you just, you just be obedient to the Lord. If you're going to sing, you come. Stand with me. Stand with me all over here. Father, we ask you again to work a work in our hands. In Jesus' name. Amen. You come. Is this?
Well, our old house was only two dollars. Oh, really? Wow. Well, wow, this was a big thing. But then we found it. I'm like, I don't think I'm homeless. That's it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.